Hi, I'm Mike Stanton. It's March 27th. This is the BAM Weekly Muni Market Recap. I'm joined by Grant Dewey, BAM's Head of Capital Markets, Daniel Bingham, BAM's Head of Institutional Markets. Thanks, gentlemen, for joining us. Uh, what a difference a week makes. Uh, last week, we were talking about massive losses in the muni market. This week, a lot of those losses were reversed. Uh, Dan, let's start with you. Can you walk us through some of the dynamics and why uh, why it played out the way it did? Sure. And, um, you know, Mike, you, you touch on it exactly. This, this week, we saw uh, tremendous volatility as some of the outflows that we had talked about last week of 12 plus billion out of the municipal mutual funds um, uh, continued this week with another 13 billion um, and a calendar that largely evaporated. MMD setting uh, in 10 years at a 279 and 30 year MMD setting at a 337 on the highs, um, but with a combination of uh, both the uh, Fed and fiscal uh, stimulus um, both saying uh, various comments along the lines of uh, they're going to do whatever it takes has uh, created um, uh, almost a hundred, well, a, an absolute 180 degree turn here. Um, and as we sit here today, um, one year, uh, 10 year, uh, 10 year MMD uh, set this morning or last night at a 134 um, and is expected to come in at 126. That's down from a 279 last week. A 30 year MMD. Uh, which set uh, last night at a 192, expectations of setting at a 182, uh, down from a 337 last week. So really a uh, completely different landscape here. And who are the buyers, right? We talked, the, the outflows from the mutual funds are continuing. Are they crossover buyers, people coming out and seeing relative value? Is that what's driving it? I think, I think it's a combination um, that people had a, a lot of confidence from a credit point of view with the, uh, uh, the uh, plans that the Fed and the fiscal authorities took uh, action on. In fact, the House just passed uh, the stimulative me measure and, and that's expected to be signed by the president shortly. Um, so it's uh, uh, dealer confidence has returned, investor confidence in municipal credit quality has stabilized um, and has returned. Uh, so we are seeing a lot of crossover buyers and dealers' ability and willingness to inventory muni bonds uh, coming back, all providing pretty good back that backstop here. Great, and yeah, the news out of Washington is dramatic, and there's a lot of it, right? <laughs> 150 oh, yeah. billion dollars wow. in direct grants, um, a 425 billion dollar facility that could be used to support liquidity. So that's obviously. Uh, investors responding to that. Uh, Grant, how did that translate? So in, in the muni market this week, there were not a lot of new issues priced till the second half of that week. We'll talk about the primary in a second. But mm -hmm. in the secondary market, BAM was active. What did you see? Well, uh, the market volatility that you know we've all read about and Dan just described uh, created quite a bit of incremental demand for our secondary insurance. As you've mentioned, the primary market was essentially shut down and the conditions that caused the primary market to be put on hold are the same ones that that help our secondary business. So, um, you know, the uh, market moves like this create a lot of repositioning of portfolios. There's obviously a lot of uh, you know liquidity ra raising cash to meet redemptions. There's there are credit moves. There's coupon restructuring, duration management, things like that. So uh, there was an unusually high amount of secondary trading activity, and that's always a good thing for us. And so looking um, at the, there were, there were about $68, billion, uh, $68 million of BAM insured bonds uh, in the primary market this week. Next week, we're hearing from dealers that, you know, starting April 1st, they're going to start uh, bringing deals back in. Is that uh, what you're hearing as well? Yeah, uh, we were called. Uh, there was a couple uh, larger deals. Uh, we heard from one of the underwriters today asking us to, um, to uh, uh, give them prices uh, for that deal. We're not sure if it's going to move ahead, but I think, you know, as – as it's been for the last few weeks, a lot of the calendars on a day-to-day -day basis, but I do think, and Dan talked about the dynamics, but I do think that the market is ready to receive uh, issuance again. Uh, we had big, uh, I think the, the flow of redemptions has slowed down. Um, and uh, you know, one thing I'll mention, a lot of our activity was derived from bonds that had dropped to a discount. So with a discount bond, you can amortize the insurance premium to maturity. Uh, unlike a callable premium bond, uh, thereby reduces the yield cost uh, of the premium to the investor. So that also drove a lot of our of our secondary uh, demand um, this week and last week. We had we did about uh, 120 million uh, in secondary business in in those two weeks. So um, higher than higher than usual. And I think 
Uh, and I think as the primary market returns next week, I think you'll see um, a little bit less of uh, a focus on the secondary. Great. And we'll see. Uh, we'll be in touch next week with a couple of credit comments. I know uh, Suzanne Finnegan, our chief credit officer, is going to do a uh, video next week talking about some of the credit implications of the CARES Act, the, uh, the federal stimulus package. So uh, people can watch for that on our YouTube channel as well. So uh, thanks, gentlemen, for your time today and have a great weekend. Thanks, thanks Michael. Michael.